In previous episodes of Rewind, we examined the history of the thousands of people who in the mid-1970s made their way to Guam shores on ships and planes during Operation New Life. In the second episode of our three-part series, we spoke with Anderson Air Force Base historian Jeff Meyer about the massive evacuation of Vietnamese, Southeast Asian allies, and American nationals from Vietnam. The efforts, coordinated by the U.S. military, involved all service branches as well as members of Guam's community who took part in the processing, medical care, and housing of more than 100,000 people who became refugees after fleeing the war-torn country. Later this year, to commemorate the U.S. humanitarian mission, the United States Navy Memorial will dedicate a replica of the lone sailor on island. The statue, one of less than 20 in the nation and only the second outside the continental U.S., is a tribute to those in sea services. The statue will symbolize the lasting relationship the Vietnamese American community has with the island, her people and the military services who provided them with care and administrative assistance. In this last episode of our special series, we meet Dr. Evan Espiritu, who specializes in refugee studies, to learn more about the Vietnamese experience. And she also shares her family's personal story, as she talks about her mother and grandmother's passage through Guam as refugees during Operation New Life. When the story of this war comes to be told in school, My mom and grandmother uh, actually were stationed in Guam for a little bit. They were processed here because they were Vietnamese refugees after the Vietnam War. So they decided to leave in April 1975. They went through several of the U.S. military bases in the Pacific. So they were first in the Philippines. Ferdinand Marcos decided no, um, you know, in the Philippines because it was sovereign territory, had that power to say so. So they were in Guam for a very short time. In terms of their personal experience, there's not much. I think more is just trying to navigate everything, you know. They left. Um, Vietnam kind of on sudden conditions. It was very short uh, term notice um, so they had to very quickly decide to gather what they could, um, went on a military plane. Guam actually you know did open its doors and not only the military but also the local population who volunteered, volunteered as translators, they volunteered as cooking for people, um, they offered to sponsor Vietnamese refugees who decided to come. Governor Bordalo, even before President Ford asked him to host Operation New Life, he, like in early April, welcomed and said, you know, we want to offer Guam as this land. Guam played such a huge role um, during the Vietnam War as being the host of Anderson Air Force Base and the B-52s that were very instrumental. Um, and they wanted to turn around and say, we want to play another role, you know, after the war as well and helping all these Vietnamese refugees. For many of them, they didn't know where they were when they first landed here. They were sort of transported on a military plane. And when they got here, they said, where are we? Um, you know, how can I contact my family? How can I contact my other relatives who are coming in from all different places? What do I do with all my money? You know, I have to exchange money. I have to, you know, get immigration papers. Um, so all of that, you know, needed to be facilitated um, by people who are here. So I asked people why they decide to stay versus going on to the state side, because the majority of people went on to the state side. Some of the things that people have said is that they really feel like the climate and the culture of Guam is very similar to Vietnam. It's also much closer, so if they you know, have family or relatives in Vietnam, it's easier for them to go back and forth. I think overall they say people are very welcoming here. Um, and they really appreciate the, the island culture and they appreciate um, you know, the role that uh, the local population played in accepting them and embracing them as part of their community. So they've been able to open up restaurants here, um, several different shops, um, and feel like they're really a part of the place here. And if it wasn't for the role that Guam played you know, as being that first major processing center, um, it, that really facilitated uh, the ability for a lot of Vietnamese refugees to then resettle um, and to find a better life in the United States. Mm -hmm. 